Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about another way to access your server remotely and that is using a application called Splashtop. Now Splashtop is a VNC client, it's a screen sharing client really, that allows you to access your server, uh, it's the actual computer screen, on your iPad, iPhone, or other iOS devices. And so it, uh, it really is a neat way to be able to get to your server to do the screen sharing. And an iPad, uh, not as much as an, on an iPhone, but an iPad is really a great way to be able to uh, you know, look at your desktop and manage the things that are on there. There are other ones out there, uh, but this one seems to work really well uh, and is pretty good with speed and uh, responsiveness. So here's the Splashtop web page right here. And so what you're going to want to do is download the streamer. Um, because you need a streamer uh, in order to running on your computer so that it has a way to access your computer remotely. Now this will work also if you don't have a server. If you've got some other type of application it'll work with that as well. But, uh, but it really is a good way to do it. So you can see here I've got the Splashtop streamer. I'm going to uh, load that up just to kind of show you what it looks like in terms of the install. I've already installed it myself. Uh, but what you're going to do is run this uh, package right here. You just would double click this package and start to run the, uh, the process. It'll ask you for your login and those kinds of things. And that'll walk you through the install. Let me just put this down here. Uh, it's also going to ask you to uh, create an account. And then when you're done, it's going to actually put this little icon up here in the top. And let me just click on that for a minute. You can see I've got the ability to exit, check for updates, or preferences. Let me just click preferences for a second. This is the streamer preferences uh, area. You can see it's got a status right here where uh, I've already registered a computer right here. It's not being accessed right now. Uh, when I do access that, it'll show up here. And then here's my actual account uh, email uh, that my account is linked to. I can log in or out from here as well. Um, but it just kind of gives me an overview of it. Now, settings-wise, if I just click here on settings, uh, you want to check to enable auto launch so that every time you restart your computer, uh, this little uh, launch streamer will always be available uh, on your computer so you don't have to remember whether, to, whether you launched it or not. Uh, you can enable password protection if you want. Uh, you can enable the lock screen, which will automatically lock this computer at the end of the session so that when you're done using it remotely, the computer will lock. Uh, that, works, that works good if you've got it kind of, you know, the your iPad is the only way that you're accessing it, so you just want to kind of lock it down every time you walk away from it. Uh, the other thing is you can enable a uh, blank screen, uh, which would require a uh, virtual display uh, driver uh, so that others can't see what you're doing while you're remotely using your computer. So that when you log in, they're not able to watch the screen at home. It'll just create a blank screen and nobody will know what you're doing. Uh, so that's a beta uh, function. I haven't enabled that myself, but uh, if that's something you want to do, you could explore that. And then you've got a virtual display driver. If you don't have a display, you don't have your computer hooked up to one, uh, you can install this driver uh, to make that work. Okay, so that kind of just walks you through some of the basic settings. Uh, you've got other things on here, you know, your IP address. You can create a security code if you want. Um, you know, internet discovery. Uh, you can log on to your Google account. Uh, from anywhere if you want to do that. Uh, then you've got the port number and all of that uh, information there and it automatically does its own port. Now if you wanted to you could change the port but then you'd have to uh, do some port forwarding to make those changes happen. And then finally just a little about section that kind of talks to you about what uh, this is all about. So that gives you an idea of the little streamer. Once this is running you'll be able to access your computer from anywhere. And so what I'm going to do now is let's switch over to uh, my iPad and I'll show you what it looks like when you've downloaded the application to your iOS device. Okay, here we are over on my iPad and uh, let me just take you into the App Store here for a second so you can see uh, how to download it. You've got Splashtop 2 Remote Desktop. Let me just uh, pop that up here for a description. And uh, you can see here, uh, it kind of gives you some idea of what it does. Uh, there's some good, uh, good ratings and reviews on it. Uh, it works pretty, uh, pretty well. Now the great thing about it is it is a, a free download uh, where they make their money as they charge if you want to have off-site access to your server. So if you are uh, on your home network, you're fine you have no problem accessing it when you're outside your network if you want to access it on any Wi-Fi or anything like that that's where you would pay for it now one of the things that does work however if you do have VPN set up if you VPN back into your home network 
then you actually uh, are seen as on your home network and you can access this remotely as well. And uh, I can show you how to uh, access uh, VPN as well uh, once we get this uh, up and running. Let me just close this down and come back on here. So uh, I've already downloaded Splashtop 2, so let me click on it so you can see what it looks like once it launches. And so when it launches, you have this login screen here where you need to actually uh, put in your login to get in here. Uh, again, if you haven't, uh, if you already downloaded the streamer, then your login is uh, the same one that you use to get the streamer going. It's the same account. It just talks on online. And so if you hadn't and you did this backwards and you downloaded the app first, then you, uh, then you would have to create an account on here and then do the streamer back on your home network. So let me uh, enter my password and then I'll show you what it looks like when you come back in. Okay, so I've got my password in there. Uh, I checked the little box that says stay logged in and so let me just click log in. And so what it's going to do now is log me in. It's going to refresh and look for any servers I have connected or computers that I have connected to Splashtop. And again, like I said, you don't have to have a server uh, to use Splashtop. You can use it with uh, any computer you've got on your network. And so you can see here I've got uh, two computers there and it gives me a couple little options. If you look at the little pencil on the right here, let me just push this down, uh, you can set the resolution, uh, whether you want the resolution to be 800 by 600 or the iPad's best fit, or use the computer's native display setting. Now if you use a native display setting depending on um, you know how big your computer's monitor is and things like that. Uh, it might cause you some problems on the display. So the the 1024 by 768 uh, that it's picked up uh, to me that works really well. And you'll see how it fits the screen perfectly. And you shouldn't have too many uh, too many problems with it. But you do have the ability to uh, to play with the resolution if you want to do that. I guess if you're playing uh, you know certain video games and things like that, you want to play those remotely. Uh, you might want to use the native display setting of the computer in order to uh, you know have all the frames come through. I haven't experimented that with my, by myself, but uh, I think that's something that you could probably do if you needed to. Let me just pop that back up. Uh, you'll notice uh, across the top, before I log in and show you how that works, there's these little dots up here. You want to push these up here, and a little drop-down comes where you have settings. If you click on settings, now you've got your basic uh, information there. You can log out if you want to. Uh, you can, uh, you know, if you've gotten logged out, you can reconnect. Uh, it gives you the option to do that. Uh, other options on the side. Uh, you can show hints if you want to have hints that come up that show you and remind you how to use the keyboard and the mouse and things like that. Uh, you can allow auto lock to happen uh, so that your uh, the auto lock uh, you know you allow that to turn off your screen during a session, uh, or you can uh, leave it off so that it won't lock while you're in the middle of being connected to your computer remotely. Uh, you can have it run in the background. You can show offline computers if you turn that off. Any computer that's not online uh, will not show. I tend to like to leave that on just so I can see all of my computers on there. Uh, you can optimize your network if you want, and then uh, product improvement, just basically, again, if you want to send reports to them about your activity so they can see how well things are running. Uh, under Advanced, you can specify an IP address if you want to do that. Uh, instead of having it uh, discover it locally and those kinds of things. Again, you, from my experience, you won't need to use that, uh, but it's there uh, as an option if you want to. And then finally, you've got the About, where it tells you the version and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go back here uh, on the settings, because I don't need that. You've got a little handy uh, help area down here, which will take you to a website. You've also got this little... Um, uh, a, a little arrow down here which uh, you can press and will show you the various uh, access packs that they've got. Uh, again, if you want to access uh, the computer from anywhere, from any device, you can pay $1.99 monthly or $16.99 yearly. Uh, again, pretty reasonable uh, if you're out and about and you're not using uh, VPN or anything like that. Uh, they've also got a productivity pack uh, that's here as well that allows you to uh, uh, do some on-screen shortcuts and annotate content and things like that. And again, that's another feature that you can, uh, you know, have on there and set up as well. But uh, like I said, it works pretty good right out of the box the way it is, and so I'm just going to uh, leave it alone on the uh, free version. Now, since I'm on my home uh, network right now, uh, everything's working fine. Like I said, if you were uh, remote, uh, if you turned on VPN on your computer, uh, on your uh, iPad, I mean, or your iOS device, uh, it would show that you're on your local network, and that's an easy way to connect. So to connect, uh, all I need to do is simply uh, push the button, and as you'll see here in a minute, I'm going to uh, uh, just connect into my server, and you'll see what that looks like. I'll do the Mac Mini. Let's do that one. And so what it does is it goes out and it starts connecting to your computer. And it's uh, processing that right now. It'll take a, take a few minutes, but not long. Uh, 
And then you can see as soon as you connect to your computer, all of a sudden this uh, screen comes up that gives you handy hints on the gestures. You can see that a one finger tap equals a left click. If you hold the tap, it's a right click. If you do a two finger tap, you toggle the uh, trackpad mode where you're moving the mouse around. Uh, to drag windows around, it's a two finger scroll up and down. Uh, if you want to scroll the screen up and down, it's three fingers. And then if you want to swipe, if you've got multiple displays, you just three fingers swipe to the left or to the right. And you can see you can turn the hints off if you want to, or you can uh, you know, have them show every time. If I just swipe to the left there, it'll also give you uh, hints on the toolbar down below. And you can see you've got the disconnect, you've got hints, you can lock the orientation so it doesn't rotate on you if you're using an iOS device, obviously. Uh, you've got the scroll bar, trackpad mode, uh, switch displays, sharp smooth arrows, those kinds of things. And so what it does is it just allows you, if you want to manually select some of these things instead of using the finger shortcuts, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to click continue. And as you can see, here I am on my uh, desktop. And so I'm, I'm logging into uh, the server, and the full desktop is there. It looks really good, and it really is kind of a nice, uh, nice option. Uh, you can see here, if I do my uh, move the mouse around, I can select stuff. I'm just doing that box so you can kind of see how that works because the mouse won't be very clear uh, on there. Uh, if I just sort of double, um, if I tap down here, down below, if I double tap, obviously the mouse will move around. Uh, but if I look down at the bottom, you can see this little uh, keyboard area here that pops up. And what that does is gives you um, all the different keys that you want. If you wanted the trackpad uh, mode, you can click that. And it says you can touch anywhere on the screen to move the arrow around. And so as you can see, very fluid. I'm just moving the mouse around uh, just like anything else. And if I want to right or left click, uh, let's for instance right click. If I just click down here, you can see I get the menus up to right click. So it works uh, It works pretty well. I mean, it's a, it's a nice uh, system. It allows you to access your computer remotely. And like I said, as you can see, not a lot of lag. Uh, it, moves, uh, it moves pretty pretty well. If I come back down to, uh, to here again, then it brings up my uh, information. I can go down there. If I click over here to the right, the keyboard comes up. And now I'm able to type some things if I want to do that. And I can just pop the keyboard down. So it really is a great solution to be able to access your computer remotely. Uh, when you're done, all you got to do is just click this little disconnect area down here. You can see that light up. And it puts me right back where I was, and I can start over. So as you can see, it's, uh, Splashtop is a pretty good uh, application. It's a great way to get back into your server remotely on an iOS device and sure makes uh, getting attached to your server uh, easy because you can carry something lighter than having to carry a laptop or something like that around with you all the time. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.